myself, um, probably um, Beth Collishaw or Sylvia Valiza that will probably join a little bit later. So um, for now, I think I'm going to leave you in Jesse's hands. And uh, tonight's uh, recipe is uh, risotto ai funghi. So it's just to whet your appetite a little bit before, um, before dinner. Uh, I think you can ask uh, Jesse for all the ingredients uh, and the recipe if you don't get it during, during the show. Um, did I miss something? Pietro, co-host? Nope, that nope. was great. We did okay. everything. Okay, That's it. I see you later. Thank you, Dr. Zani, for the beautiful presentation. If anyone has any questions, you can save it later on to breakout room, or you can direct your question to the chat box to Dr. Zani Cordy or our, our other co-hosts. And let's go to our most exciting part, Jesse's cooking show. Here we go. Hey, Jesse. Hey, Yang. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Globe Kitchen. Today we are going to feature risotto con fungi. Um, we're gonna feature two very special mushrooms in this rice dish. Uh, we've got a porcini mushroom, uh, which is uh, native or it grows in uh, Piedmont region of Italy. And right now it's growing fresh and people are out gathering it with their families and making this dish in their home. And so I was really excited to show you all how to make this in your homes uh, and kind of demystify risotto somewhat. You know, a lot of people kind of think it's a, a tough dish to make and cooking shows definitely, you know, promote it as, a, oh, it's such a challenge. You got to do all these things, but I'm going to show you how to make it. It's actually pretty easy. And honestly, it's a really great like date night or special event food where you can make and really uh, show off some, you know, cooking skills and impress some people. So um, Italian food, uh, you know, is all about fresh, high quality ingredient ingredients. So um, Let's get into the ingredients now and we'll talk about each one. Um, first off, you're gonna need extra virgin olive oil, just kind of a standard extra virgin olive oil is good for this dish. We're just gonna uh, saute up an, a yellow onion with it. So uh, it can just be a standard extra virgin olive oil, but you definitely don't wanna use like a soybean oil or a veggie oil, extra virgin olive oil. Dice up your yellow onion, just one small yellow onion, pretty fine, and you gently cook it so it doesn't, you don't want it to turn dark brown or, or you know, burn at all. So it's a very gentle cooking process. I kind of got that started early so we can kind of move this along. And then we've got some fresh garlic, a clove or two. And then for the rice, uh, it's very important. You need to get arborio rice. Um, and there's also, there's another type of rice, carnaroli rice. Uh, it's harder to get in the States, but this arborio, you can get this at Publix and um, it is a medium grain to kind of small grain uh, white rice and uh, it's really important you have to use this rice to make risotto. The te technique for making risotto as I'll show you uh, involves a lot of stirring and so uh, these shorter grain rices really hold up well to stirring they're not going to break down and um, so if you try to use a, a rice like basmati or jasmine it's really going to just turn to mush. Uh, so unfortunately, we don't have any fresh porcinis here, but uh, we do have some dried porcinis and these are excellent. They have a lot of meaty flavor. Uh, if you get them fresh, they have this delicious kind of uh, like not chewy, but they've just got this great texture that's kind of hard to describe. You just have to enjoy, uh, you know, experience fresh yourself. You cut them up large and you can really just sink your teeth into them. But when they're dried, their flavor is very... Uh, very strong and very meat-like. And so what I did here, this was half of this little bag. It, this was about a half an ounce of dried porcinis. These are also at Publix in the produce section. Uh, and I just took about a half a cup, three quarter cup boiling water, poured it on top, and I just let them reconstitute. And they'll be ready for the recipe uh, within like five, 10 minutes. So these, since we don't have any uh, fresh porcini, I wanted to get some other fresh mushrooms to add to this. Now you're not gonna probably be able to get uh, fresh chanterelles, but these is a wild mushroom, uh, like porcini, only wild. Um, can't be grown, you know, uh, in a farm or anything like that. So they have to be hunted and gathered. And these grow around here naturally. Uh, and right now it's kind of the end of the season. So I popped outside and I grabbed a bunch for this, but you all could use white button mushrooms. So you get that mushroom texture, the fresh mushroom texture. 
the porcini is really going to even infuse into those really plain white button mushrooms and they'll take on that flavor. And so that's a really good uh, alternative to these chanterelles. I just wanted to get these because I love chanterelles and wild mushrooms. Both. And then um, you're also going to need stock for this. Um, unfortunately, uh, I went to Trader Joe's, I guess maybe fortunately, and uh, I got this uh, vegetable broth. And I, for my practice yesterday, I tried to make this dish with this vegetable broth. Let me show you what happened here. It ended up being really, really bad. So I'm going to show you, at least tell you how to do this uh, vegetable broth uh, from scratch. It's really easy. But this one, they put a ton of carrot juice in it. So it really ended up making my risotto taste like carrots yesterday. And then it made it very, very orange. So I would not recommend this product from Trader Joe's, although I would recommend many others. Um, so this is the broth that I made today. It's just onions, celery, carrots, and um, you know, a couple peppercorns, a bay leaf, uh, and then some parsley. And you just cook that for about 45 minutes. You don't want to boil it heavily. You just want to boil it um, like nice and simmered for about 45 minutes. And then you just get this nice light broth and it's going to add this aroma and, and just like a kind of a foundation for everything else to build on top of here. And so it's important, you know, water, you could use water, but you're going to definitely lose a little bit of depth if you don't make some broth or get some really plain broth. If you have a, you know, a product you like, just, you know, use that. Um, and then, so we've got flat leaf Italian parsley, and this is optional. Not everybody puts the uh, parsley in, in their risotto, but this, uh, if you do, you want to get the flat leaf parsley. And over here, we uh, have some Parmigiano Reggiano. And so this is something you also, you have to have arborio rice. You have to have Parmigiano Reggiano in a uh, real risotto. Uh, this is a cheese uh, from Emilia Romagna uh, region of Italy. And they've been making this cheese, uh, you know, the same way since the early 1600s. Uh, it's a controlled cheese so that it can only be made in certain places in Italy. It has to be made from cows that only eat green, you know, leafy stuff. They can't be fed corn. They can't be fed, you know, any kind of grains or anything. So it's a, it's a grass fed free range milk that they use for this cheese. And then it has very strict processing methods so that you can only make it a certain way for it to be called Parmigiano Reggiano. And the reason I went to Trader Joe's honestly is to pick up the cheese because this is the cheapest, the cheapest you can get Parmigiano Reggiano is at Trader Joe's. It's $15 a pound. You only need about a quarter pound for this recipe. So it's really worth the trouble to get up there and pick some up. If you're gonna use Kraft Parmesan, you're really gonna be disappointed. This is not gonna turn out well for you. So I really recommend get the real Italian stuff. And um, that's really, you know, all you need to make this dish great. Um, and then uh, finally, we've just got about four tablespoons of butter. These are our finishing ingredients over here. And this is our beginning stuff here. So let's go ahead. We're, I'm gonna start warming this up on the stove and we're gonna add some garlic to it. So you're gonna sweat your onions. It's gonna take about 10 minutes or so. And then you're gonna put your garlic in after your onions have sweat for a while. So garlic clove, pretty easy. I always like to use fresh garlic uh, rather than the pre-minced or the pre-peeled fresh garlic. When you peel it, it's just got so much more flavor. It's not gonna have any bitterness to it. It's not gonna have any kind of off aromas. So I just smash it with the side of my knife and then I always slice it in half after that. And then I also remove the little sprout in there. Seems a little labor intensive or time consuming, but it's worth it. I got, I got that tip from a French chef. He does that for all of his garlic uh, because for him, he thinks that it has off flavor and causes indigestion too. So. I took that tip and I ran with it. I do it for all my garlic. So our onions are heating back up here and I'm gonna add my garlic to it. So a couple of tools you're gonna need for this. Uh, you're definitely gonna want some kind of wooden spoon. This is for a really big batch of risotto. Um, I don't think I'm making that big of a batch today, but I might end up using it. Uh, and you use a wooden spoon for a couple of reasons, I, I think. Um, one is because this dish, you're going to stir it for a good 20 minutes. So it's a lot of stirring and it's a lot easier 
to stir with a wooden spoon. You can, it just feels better. You can hold it in your hand better. Those metal spoons, they, the handles are really thin and um, it just doesn't have the, I don't know, just that tactile thing. So it's one to me is a feeling. And number two, when you're stirring it with that uh, rice, the, the bluntness of the wooden spoons, I, I think the way that it contacts the rice, I think that it helps release the starch from the rice and makes a creamier risotto. Um, and so wooden spoon, that's important. Um, we also have a 12 inch saute pan here. And so you want to use a wide surface area saute pan. This one has curved sides. If you have a straight sided one, that's better. I just don't have a straight sided one. All right, so that garlic is starting to get fragrant. We don't need to cook it very heavily. Uh, next, we are going to add in your mushrooms. Okay. And with the mushrooms, I always add in a pinch of salt. It kind of helps them release some of their liquid. Mushrooms are mostly water. We want these to cook down before we go on to the next step. So look at this one. It's just a beautiful, I just, just love these mushrooms. They're so, so pretty to me. It's like edible wildflowers just growing everywhere. All right, so let me just turn it up the heat a little bit. We're about medium. I don't want to burn the onions. So once the mushrooms start releasing some liquid, I'll be able to turn it up a little bit higher. Okay, I'm going to bring my stock back over to the stove. You want to have your stock in a little stock pot here. And even if you have it, if you bought it from the store, you want to heat it up. So I'm going to get that going. It was already hot, but we're just going to keep it warm. It's important when you're, when we start cooking the rice and adding the water to it or the stock to it, that the stock is warm and that way the cooking process doesn't slow down. It'll make you take, you know, a half hour, 40 minutes if you keep adding something cold to the pot. So you want to add the hot stock to it. So the process just keeps continuing along quickly. All right. You want to come back over here? I'm going to let those cook. Laura, if you want to come back over here. All right, for the arboreal rice, uh, it's about two cups, cup and three quarters. Uh, and then for the portini, we're going to take them out of the liquid and we're going to squeeze that liquid out. And then we are going to take this and we're not going to cut it super small, but we're not going to leave it large either. It's just kind of a little bit smaller than bite sized pieces. If we leave these too big, it, they are kind of tough and we want the flavor to disperse really well. So um, nice little chunks are good. You'll get a little kind of chewy bit there and it'll be a burst of flavor. And then we're going to reserve this uh, mushroom liquid, we can actually pour it into our stock. And we want to be careful because there could be some sand in the bottom of it. So we just kind of pour and then we leave the leftovers in the bottom and we can just ditch that part. So risotto con fungi is just one type of risotto. There are really uh, kind of endless versions of this um, or variations, I suppose. Yeah, there's um, some people put fruits in this. I saw a uh, risotto with apples. Um, there's one in here. I've got this Italian book here. Uh, let's see. It's a bunch of different rices here, but this was an interesting one I saw is a risotto uh, al barolo. So instead of stock, they used a uh, barolo uh, wine, which is from Piedmont too. It's a um, a grape called Nebbiolo. And um, this one isn't that creamy. So risottos don't even necessarily have to be creamy. They can just be, um, you know, semi-dry. 
Uh, so there's a lot of different variations. I've got different mushrooms that they use. They use morels, a lot of wild mushrooms. Uh, looks like pumpkin on here. And online, I mean, you can see endless kind of uh, varieties and different, different ways that people make it. Um, some people use meat stock, like a chicken stock instead of a veggie stock. Um, but the consistent things about it are arborio rice and uh, Parmesan cheese and butter. I mean, these are, these are the standards. Um, so, okay, let's come back over to the stove. The mushrooms are cooked down now somewhat. They've released some liquid. And at this point, we're gonna add our porcinis. So porcinis uh, are a wild mushroom uh, like chanterelles too that grow all around the world. They have different names for them all over the world. Uh, they grow down here in the Southeast. I don't, I don't find them too much down here, uh, but they grow, uh, you know, they're very widespread uh, out West in Oregon and Northern California. Uh, and out there, they call them King Belita. Uh, but it's really uh, the same mushroom. And they're, they're really big. I wish I had a fresh one to show you. The caps on them can be 15 inches across. And they're just massive. They can be like four to five pounds. Like some of these are huge. And some of the stems are, you know, 12 inches high and a big giant cap. And uh, so they usually don't grow, you know, there's like, they usually grow like one, maybe there you'll find a clump of them, but usually they're solitary. Um, it's just a, it's just a super fun kind of hobby to, to go out and hike around in the woods and try to search for these things. All right. So our mushrooms are looking nice and sauteed. Onions are not burnt or anything and they're not brown. They're very tender. And at this point, we are going to add uh, our rice. We're going to keep it going at about a medium heat. And the idea here is we're going to stir this around and get all the gr grains of rice coated with oil. And then we're going to spread it out a little bit. And we're just going to cook the rice in the pan with no liquid here for a minute or so. Um, now, a lot of risotto recipes also have white wine included in them. A lot of the, the mushroom ones I found didn't have white wine included in them, and I was kind of surprised. Um, but after this process of kind of cooking the rice in the pan here for a minute, what we would do is deglaze the pan with white wine. And you would just use about a half a cup or so. You don't really need a lot. And um, deglazing is going to take, when you add a liquid like that, any of this crust that is formed on here, that's going to come up and get incorporated into the, into the broth. And the white wine itself, what it does is it adds a layer of uh, acidity to this. And so it kind of wakens things up a little bit. A little bit of acid like that is going to kind of give your food a bit of a liveliness and um, kind of brighten it up. You're not really going to taste the wine so much as it's just going to be a background kind of player, like supporting everything else. Um, there we go. So you can kind of see the outside of the rice grain is turning translucent and the inside is, has that little opaque spot. And we're not trying to necessarily brown the rice or anything, but we're just trying to get it slightly cooked without liquid here. So, uh, okay. Chef Jesse, I got a question. Yeah. And okay. everyone, uh, feel free to jump in. Pietro, feel free to jump in. So, my question will be, well, actually, they are not clear about what's the name of this dish exactly and what does it mean? in your culture and the context. Mm -hmm. Do you want to take that one, Pietro? Absolutely, why not? So risotto ai funghi means risotto with mushrooms, okay? And that's a typical dish from Northern Italy. And it's actually more towards a winter dish, so you wouldn't see that as much in the summer or towards the end of summer. It's more, more of a fall slash winter dish. And it's a very traditional recipe for us. It's very common to make. As Jesse was saying, there are so many different kinds, but this is definitely one of the most famous ones. Yeah, 
right? Thank you, Pantro. Yeah, All right, so my rice is looking pretty good. It's actually getting a little bit toasty, and that's fine. Um, and I'm going to gently take a ladle full of my veggie stock here, and we're going to pour it into the pan. I'm going to stir that one in a little bit. And then once all that liquid has kind of been soaked up by the rice there, we're going to add another one. Okay. Yes, so Irene, do you guys know any good wine pairings with risotto ai funghi? Well, it depends where you're from. I think Irene will have very different opinions than me because she's from the Veneto region. Exactly. <laughs> Pietro is completely right. So I would probably use a white wine, but I don't think that's the correct answer. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. So you, if you're in the Veneto region, you'd probably veer towards a uh, Gewurztraminer, uh, so a nice oh. white wine. If you're in my region, you'd go into Cortese, if you like white wine. It's a dry, nice wine that will not overpower the taste of risotto. And if you're more into red, I would suggest something along the lines of Barbera, because again, you don't want to overpower the risotto. So if you go into Nebbiolo or Barolo, the wines that Jesse was mentioning before, those are way too strong. Uh, always a good thing uh, to do when you're trying to pair wines with risotto is to look at the tannins and the alcohol charge of wine. If mm -hmm. those are too high, you should not pair anything with something as delicate as risotto. Irene, did you have something? Yeah, as Jesse that? said, the porcini mushrooms have a strong flavor. Mm -hmm. So that, that is something that makes it a little bit more complicated to pick a wine with this. But if you were to do seafood risotto, for sure a white to dry wine would be the choice. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, a red wine like Pietro suggested would be good. And in Italy, isn't it, it's really common to drink wine with, with meals, right? Is that... Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Jesse, we have a question. If you okay. want for you, if you wanted to make a mushroom stock, what mushrooms would you recommend using? A mushroom stock. I would definitely recommend using dried dried mushrooms um, if you're just trying to make like a broth or stock. Um, and honestly, these porcini work really well for that too, because that, that soaking liquid that we had, yeah. um, you know, you could add that soaking liquid to uh, this broth and, and, you know, it would, it would give it a nice uh, background mushroom flavor. If you want a very strong mushroom uh, stock, I would just say add, add more of the dried mushroom to it. And, or, you know, also you can take that, once you've soaked it, you can puree that dried reconstituted or reconstituted mushroom in like a food processor and that will really disperse that intense flavor throughout your your um fluid so uh some people take these dried porcinis and they put them in a coffee grinder and turn them into like a dust and then they'll coat meat with it and and you know and you know different things like that so people use these por dried porcinis in many ways it is you know it is considered one of the best wild mushrooms in the world i mean apart from maybe like truffles and, um, you know, morels. So they're right up there with morels, really. All right. Oh. So I am going to turn off this one because you're going to do, you're going to go through that process of stirring and adding the, the stock, cooking the stock down, stirring. That's going to take at least about 20 minutes to get to the final product. And so I, I started this one earlier today. And I'm much closer to being done here. You can kind of see what happens with the grains of rice. They slowly soak up that stock and they, they expand out quite a bit. Oh, that's too high. So I'm going to warm this up a little bit and add some stock to this. And so I'm going to show you how to finish it. And so 
when you're cooking it with the broth, and if you're not sure if it's done, you just want to get a spoon and try a couple of those grains of rice and see. You, you don't want it to be mushy. Uh, you want it to definitely have somewhat of a bite to it. You don't want it to be crunchy either. So kind of once you get to that kind of almost done, you know, or you al dente, uh, you can add a couple more or add one more scoop of uh, broth here. I'm trying to get my veggies out of my ladle. Uh, there we go. Just I'm gonna stir this in. We have a couple more questions. Is it a standalone okay. mixture generally made with an entree? And can you use fruit wines? For the fruit okay. wines, let me jump in and say no. Those are just right. wines. So you it's gonna be a mix up of flavors that is not going to turn out well. You're not what going if? to enjoy risotto nor the wine. What I if, though? <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask a follow up question. But what if you make a fruit risotto? Because I make blueberry risotto at times. Mm -hmm. so those are very popular. Use the fruit wine. But still, risotto is a is a savory dish. So do not use dessert <laughs> wines to pair with savory <laughs> dish. Any savory dish as a as a ground rule. And yes, it can be a standalone dish, or you can have an entree before, or you can have a secondo piatto, so another dish following up right after. It depends the type of dinner that you're having. We generally also make it as a standalone thing. You just eat your risotto and you're very satisfied with just that. So one thing I want to say about this dish, or at least, um, and Pietro Danny, you can totally correct me. Um, if I can't make stock, vegetable stock or anything, I tend to just use vegetable bouillon cube or idadi, mm -hmm. and which works just as well. So if, you know, you don't have time to make vegetable stock fresh at home, you know, that definitely works and it's a pretty cheap option. Yes, uh, again, idea. I would say that you're, you know, your solution is great. Probably Pietro is cringing, um, <laughs> but guys, it does work. Get a, a vegetable bouillon, the nor, nor, you know, brand type. Um, put it directly in the rice when you're mixing. Use your porcini's uh, water as extra broth and you're about okay. <laughs> you, know, you might want to add uh, uh, the parsley at the end to make it more veggie but it's pretty good so you do not necessarily have to go through the process of making that uh, vegetable broth if you are in a hurry or um, I suggest vegetable bouillon if you're going that route and it turns out really good um, one thing I also suggest is that you keep tasting it so that you can adjust for salt uh, and um, not just the consistency of the rice, but also for the taste. You absolutely want to be time efficient. And also, if you use a bouillon, you avoid what Jesse was talking about at the beginning, that the broth, the prepackaged broth, may be too carroty or too celery or too something, whereas the bouillon is more balanced. And here, Jesse, I think, you may jump in and say what you think also. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I think the, the broth cubes will be, that'll be a great, you know, addition and it's really quick. You would just want to watch out for your salt from that because a lot of times those have a lot of salt. So you don't want to put too much salt in before you, you add that. Um, so yeah, you see uh, this, I had to add a lot of liquid to this. It was, I, I took it off the stove when it was at a point where it had no liquid and it still needed a couple more rounds of cooking. Uh, but this is about right here, and it's gonna soak up a little bit of this. You want your risotto to be uh, semi-liquid. Um, and it, you know, as it cools, it kind of firms up too. Um, oh, last year, around the same time, I was moonlighting at this uh, French restaurant in town. And funny thing is they had risotto on the menu and I was, every Saturday night, Saturday night I would go cook over there and I was like their risotto chef, I guess. Um, but the funny thing is that in, in the Italian recipes that I've looked all at, 
none of them really finished with like a lot of cream. Some of them might have a little bit of cream here and there, but it's definitely not uh, real uh, common from what I could tell. But the French, the French chefs were like, they, you know, in a restaurant, you cook it like this and you, you um, have it par cooked and then you finish it to order. And so they would always say, oh no, no broth, no broth, all cream. I was like, is this is this French or what is going on with this risotto here? I was like, I don't even know they made this in France. So, but it's the the French version is super rich, and uh, so I don't know I don't know what was going on there, but it was always funny to me. All right, so you can see where that that broth is the starch from the rice has made that broth very very creamy at this point. And we're getting it back up to a simmer. And we're just going to gently simmer here. And we're going to add our finishing touches. So we've got the flat leaf parsley. We're going to stir this in. We've got a good amount of butter here. This is four tablespoons. You don't have to use that much if you don't want to, but um, this is a kind of a large dish. This would definitely feed four people. So really, when you break it down, it's only one tablespoon per person. It's going to give it that kind of luxurious kind of rich richness that really in mushrooms and butter and uh, just, you know, it's all going to work together. And then once that butter's in, we are going to finish off with our Parmigiano Reggiano. And this was about a cup and a half. I'm going to save the rest for this other one. Okay. And now, I'm going to stir this in and then we're going to let it sit. So I'm going to turn it off. And the Parmesan is going to melt in. The butter's still melting. All right. How's that looking to y'all? It looks delicious. Yeah. Okay. And you could also, just a note, for people who are vegan, you could totally make this dish vegan. Pietro has yeah, made yeah. a vegan version of risotto so many times. Yes, Definitely, sir. yeah. You could use um, earth balance or margarine instead of the butter. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what you do for the cheese, but yeah, you. what do you do for the cheese, Pietro? I usually avoid putting the parmigiano in and mm -hmm. I'll serve it after. So mm -hmm. use the butter or vegan butter if we're making vegan risotto and not put the cheese in because the dish is already so rich that you can also skip putting the parmesan in the pot. I always serve it on the side, but that's just my thing. Some do, some don't. It's one of the many variations of risotto across Northern Italy. Okay. All right, so got a nice scoop here. It should be not runny, but semi-runny. It should kind of spread out a little bit on its own. And then I have got some little baby chanterelles that I sauteed earlier as a little garnish. There we go. Wow. Yes, nice little morsels here to chomp down on. Mm. And then we can even do a little Parmesan and then definitely you want to finish off with a little bit of cracked black pepper too. All right, uh, that is my risotto con fungi. I hope you all enjoyed this demo today. Uh, next week we've got uh, Tres Leches, everybody's favorite Latin American cake. So um, be sure to tune in next week. See you all later. Bravissimo. Grazie, Jesse. <laughs> we, we have time for a few follow-up questions or no? Just in yeah. case. Okay, so if you want to get them rolling in to Yang Lee, we'll be sure to have Jesse on the line or we may try to answer them. I have a question. Okay. Sorry. I'm just, I'm jumping ahead of everybody. Um, 
with all the different variations of risotto, do you guys have a favorite? I have a favorite, but I want to know your guys' favorite. So the, the flavor or, or the, the way you make it? So Wait, my let's go with flavor. Okay, Irene, you go first. Uh, hmm. It's a difficult one. I usually make the porcini risotto or mushroom risotto. And then, uh, since I'm from Northern Italy, uh, the area of Venice, uh, um, and we grow white asparagus, uh, my risotto usually is a white asparagus and shrimp, or zucchini, baby zucchini and shrimp, and uh, with a touch of saffron in it um, and it's really delicious so if you ever want to try something very peculiar the white asparagus so you can find them at fresh market or whole foods they come from peru but they're really sweet and really good uh, all year round and um, it makes for a wonderful risotto one suggestion i have um, is if you're making a seafood risotto with mussel shrimp uh, other kind of fish do not put cheese in it. Absolutely no cheese. Not for the good Italian seafood result. Grazie, Irene. So what are some other Italian rice dishes, if there are any? Yes, there are. There's the rice salad, for sure. There are uh, three million types of risotto. Uh, there's um, arancine. Mm -hmm. So rice balls from Sicily, so way down south, and I think that's it. Mm -hmm. Yes, so there are many uh, rice dishes in Italian culture. Another question is where can we get porcini mushrooms given that they are hard to find? Here? Well, I wouldn't know, Ariana. I can. Um, so, like Jesse said, it's really hard to find fresh porcini mushrooms here, but you can easily get dry porcini mushrooms at Publix, definitely Whole Foods. I don't know about Trader Joe's, but Publix always has them. And um, just like he did in the demo, you just need to let them soak with, in hot water for about like 20 minutes or so until they just kind of, what's that word he used? You know. To get their shit. I don't know. Anyways, but yeah, you could easily find them at Publix. So. And when you go to Italy, buy a big package. It will last all year round and you can parcel it out. Okay, so uh, we'll have. Okay, can you use rice, cauliflower, or would that cause too much of a change in the dish? I would just switching out the rice for anything else I haven't tried it myself but I would suggest keeping the key ingredient as it is and so not use cauliflower as a substitute for rice uh, we're going to have a lot more time in the breakout rooms especially the conversation breakout rooms to ask and answer follow-up questions but now if Yang Li gives me a thumbs up, we can start moving into the breakout rooms. There are five, uh, as announced by Irene before. One will be conversation, one games, one music, one spring 2021 courses, and one will be, uh, well, sorry, international programs, okay? So you'll be assigned to a breakout room. If you don't wanna be in that breakout room, you can come back into the main session and Yang Li will assign you to a different one, okay? Uh, also, so you're starting the rooms, but we have one question. Should you withhold the cheese from the fruit risotto? No, why would you? No, 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 you can put it. Uh, fruit and cheese pair up real nicely. So especially cherry risotto, mm, parmigiano would, would be great. Um, I've done um, with my blueberry risotto, I put in um, goat cheese. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. goat mm -hmm. cheese and blueberries, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So no, don't hold the cheese. It's gonna, it's gonna be amazing. Mm -hmm. 
Alrighty then, thank you so much everyone. But when we are transitioning to our breakout room, I'm gonna just play some background music since I'm putting everyone manually into our breakout room. So we will see you there. And as Pietro said, if you have any question or you wanna switch your room, come back to the main room, I will be here. Great, thank you, thank you. I know if it's good music. <laughs> <laughs>